And I was like, hey, thank you. I have no interest in engaging in this type of content with anybody who wants to argue about whether or not conscious parenting is biblical. Thank you, you know, I wish you so well. And it just was so interesting because mm. it was hit me. And afterwards I was like, that was weird. Normally I get like a little fluffed up. And so that was the first time after the second, first or second webinar that I was like, something's happening here that I want more of. And I was like overly probably zealous about everything. I was like full pay. I want to be there in person, like all the yeah. things, because I just knew I could tell that everything you had taught me in this, those three days was going to change my life. Welcome to Plenty. I'm your host, Kate Northrup, and together we are going on a journey to help you have an incredible relationship with money, time, and energy, and to have abundance on every possible level. Every week, we're going to dive in with experts and insights to help you unlock a life of plenty. Let's go fill our cups. Please note that the opinions and perspectives of the guests on the Plenty podcast are not necessarily reflective of the opinions and perspectives of Kate Northrup or anyone who works within the Kate Northrup brand. Hey, Wendy. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy you made the trip. So we were talking before we got started a little bit about your business, a little bit about your experience in Relax Money, and I would love to know, um, how did you first hear about Relax Money, and what was happening for you in that moment in your life or in your business that made it feel like, hmm, this could be useful? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's so funny to think back to that time. Okay, so... This is a good story. Ready? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I had probably had, I call them like mini nervous breakdowns as a business owner. It was probably like my fourth or fifth one. I've had my business for six years and I had done a big launch for an affiliate in, um, in like the, this person like really helps people heal from like religious trauma, does a lot of work with like marriages in, um, just beautiful, beautiful work, healing work. And, but it's an intense crew. Mm -hmm. So I had done a launch for them and it actually, we had some really great conversions. It was a wonderful, uh, workshop on compassionate discipline. And I had had like two people, you know, the weird people that are like, have, they'll, they'll say things to you after you teach a free workshop that you're just like, Oh, my gosh, why is the world so mean? So a woman had said to me something about like, oh, you sound like a used card salesman and how dare you go long on your presentation. And she just ripped me. And I just remember it just really, Mm. it just shook me. Mm. But yet we had a great launch, but I was like very concerned, like do other people think this? And it was like nothing new. And I have a team that monitors my Mm. inbox, but I had seen it. So after that, um, I just was like, what am I doing? Do I even want to do this anymore? And I had been on the beach and I decided maybe I'll become a lifeguard. And literally talked to the lifeguards on the San Diego beach. And I was like, look, what does it take? 46 year old, like, but I'm fit as hell. Mm -hmm. I can, they were like, yeah, you can do this. Did all the research, like almost registered for the workshop or the weekend thing to like do the training. It was actually gonna be like two months. And then I was like, okay, fine. I'm not going to give up. (laughs) I'm not going to become a lifeguard. I have to like give up two summers. And even though it would, it like is, I always joke that it would be like a great career in another life for me. Um, But I was like, no, this is, this is what I meant to do. I'm going to do this. Right. Like, so I took a deep breath and um, that week, Uh, or next few weeks, I found a few new mentors and you were one of them. And so I actually learned from you about you through uh, Natasha Willis over at the School of Bots program. I love Natasha. She's been a guest on the podcast. So for you listening, if you want to go back and listen to the Natasha Willis episode, we will put that in the show notes. (laughs) Gosh. Yeah. I love Natasha and her team. And that that program has really- You know, they live just like right here. Oh, that's right. They're right here in South Florida. There's so many yeah. people in Miami now. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, but that program really changed a lot for me and my business. But one of the biggest things is because I found you. Yeah. So you were one of the examples, right, as we were learning how to do this intense mm-hmm. tech builds mm-hmm. that it takes. And yeah, man, do I feel accomplished after building five of those funnels. I mean, and- deep bow to you. I've never built one of those funnels myself. And yeah. uh, 
I can see on the back end with the chatbots how intricate it is and so deep out. If, yeah. By the way, just so you can see how this all works, if you send me a DM on Instagram that says chat, you can explore the entire world of chatbot automated marketing, which is such a great Phenomenal. technology and uh, strategy that both Wendy and I use, which is not the point of this episode, but I'm just sharing. Bubbles is your bot, right? Bubbles. Uh, Bubbles, my bot, will respond to you if you send her a DM that only says the word chat. Do not put anything else in the in the DM, just the word chat. Yes, okay. fantastic. So that's so cool. You I were, didn't know yeah. that you found me through Natasha. Thank yeah. you, Natasha. You were an example. Great. And I was like, huh, that's okay. interesting. I just, this is, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just mm -hmm. have to say also, this is meta. Okay, here's why. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because I was an example in Natasha's program, and now you are being an example in my program. This, what is happening right now, is a brilliant strategy for getting more visibility is to become a star student and then a testimonial in other people's programs. Okay, it's so just true. listen up. Yeah. There's like a few layers happening right now. It's so true. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I will tell you that one of the, that I found your work, I signed up, I was like, man, you know, I just felt like an instant draw and connection to you and safety, I'd say, um, because that's what you radiate. And then I will tell you that one of the pivotal things was, uh, I'll never forget, I was like getting ready, buzzing around like I normally do. And that Bubbles bot girl, she was like, hey, we're meeting in 15 minutes in my DMs. And I was like, oh, crap, I need to do that. Bubbles the Bot is the reason why I'm here. Oh, so thank Bubbles the Bot you, reminded me, Bubbles. and then because without that reminder, you wouldn't have gotten. I, I and then I was like, oh, I don't know, I missed an hour already. I'm yeah, not sure right. if I watch it. So right. I tuned in, and I was like, Oh my gosh! And this was this, this to me. the Plenty Workshop. This was the Plenty Last Workshop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my gosh! Instantly, it was like after. I think it was after one workshop or the second day of the workshop. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so much different and better. And mm. it was very instant because I remember I got this DM from a woman who said she's one of our, our, our podcast listeners. And she said, hey, I just thought you might want to check this out. This is someone with like a different perspective. And I like clicked on it real quick and it was like a video of someone wanting to argue about whether gentle parenting is biblical or not. And this has been a path that I've gone down to like represent the work in the past. And I re and then I was like, what? This is just, it just wrecks me. Like it just... Oh, it's so unenjoyable for me. And I have friends that specialize in that space, but it's just not my mm. thing, even though I help so many families who are escaping from that world. And it was like the most instant, like calmest thing I've ever felt when I was like, I saw it and I saw the, the text go over the thing. And I was like, oh no, I have no interest in this. So I responded mm. in the calmest. Mm. My n Normally my heart will beat a little fast. And I'm like, oh no, here we go again. And I was like, hey, thank you. I have no interest in engaging in this type of content with anybody who is wants to argue about whether or not conscious parenting is biblical. Thank you. know, I wish you so well. And, um, you know, I have no interest in engaging with this content. And it just was so interesting because mm. it was hit me. And afterwards I was like, that was weird. Normally I get like a little fluffed up. And so that was the first time after the second, first or second webinar that I was like, something's happening here that I want more of. Mm. And so then after, um, you know, then I was like, uh, hell yes. And I was like, overly probably zealous about everything. I was like, full pay. I want to be there in person, like all yeah. the things, because I just knew I could tell that everything you had taught me in this, those three days was going to change my life. Okay, I love that story so much because what it shows is that when we know how to feel safe in our bodies, we set really good boundaries. Yeah. A sign of dysregulation is not being able to set boundaries. And boundaries are one of the healthiest, most important ways that we can be relaxed in our lives, be powerful in our lives, be purposeful in our lives, and be prosperous. So I love that. I love it so much. That's incredible. Okay. Um, we're going to bounce around topics a little bit. We're coming back to Relax Money, but I'm curious, um, where, as a parenting coach, where do you see this work showing up for you in your parenting and also for your clients? Where does regulating your nervous system apply as a gentle parent, or yeah. I don't know what you would call your 
yeah. people. My world but. is powerful, positive parenting. Powerful, it's our positive term, but parenting. It's, I love it. It's all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. It's firm and kind, connection-based parenting Great. strategies. Yeah, so that's a good question. It's It's been – and that's why another reason why I was so drawn to this work is because – it really mimics a lot of the struggles that are happening in the parenting world when when I say like our financial struggles that we don't really quite understand what's happening, but yet the outward symbol or signal is like something's going on here. This feels stressful. This isn't adding up the numbers, like all the things that happen with finances. A lot of times we're just not aware of what's like actually happening mm-hmm. under the surface, right? So with the families I work with and myself in my early years with my own journey, because my clients mimic... of the time, my journey, which was like, I really hit rock bottom as a mom and then learned this whole new world that changed my entire life and strengthened the relationship with my strong-willed daughter. And it's just beautiful. But the first, the first thing was just becoming aware what actually was happening. And so when I think about like what this work shares with, with our families that we support is there's just so much unsafety with making mistakes and mm, being yes. wrong. And and in my opinion, that's because of the standard model of parenting. Uh, whether, like, again, a lot of clients that I work with come from, like, where they had what I really call religious trauma growing up, where their parents thought that they were disciplining them in a godly way, but there was lots of physical harm. There was emotional harm, humiliation. There was shame. Like, it's like where we get... And and really in the standard world, too. Like, you don't have to be religious to, to see that. The standard protocol is like if a kid messes up uh, from the majority of the world, like, you put them in their place. Mm-hmm. Like, they need to... Like, it's like, where do we get the idea that in order to make children... or in order to make children behave better, we must first make them feel worse. Mm. And it re- it's like, what the heck? Where did this come from? Oh my but- God. And then we just keep doing that for our entire lives. I mean, I exactly. just recorded an episode about shame and self-blame around debt because yeah. we've been conditioned to think that beating ourselves up enough is going to change our behavior, which it does not. Right. Yeah. Brene Brown's like proven it, right? Through all of her social research. It does nothing. It actually stalls growth. Um, any type of shame or beating mm. yourself up. But, you know, again, you, you, like we've been conditioned to do that. So then when you grow up and you have your own children and you learn this new way, it's just the nervous system that I learned through you. And this is where I like really tied in with my work so beautifully. So not only was healing me, but it was also like, wow, this is going to be where I can be a conduit of light to my own students and pass this on to them. But it's so clear that our nervous systems are very paved and our neural, our neural pathways and our nervous systems are just, they're conditioned. And so then you go into parenthood and you're like, huh, logically it makes sense to show compassion and use firm, kind boundaries Mm -hmm. instead of fear and intimidation and overpowering. Mm -hmm. But holy smokes, to carry through on that is the challenge. And then then culture is just so like in your that's like an extra layer of I'll say fudgery <laughs> of like culture. <laughs> there's like all this I don't is it is it that the right way? Is it not the right way? There's like this idea that there's this right way. But really like I when I come beside people and help them follow their hearts and their intuition and help them understand that you can teach children with firm kindness and and strong boundaries. You don't have to hurt and harm them and intimidate them. But again, most of us have a knee-jerk reaction. The students I help at least, they mimic my journey where there's a knee-jerk reaction to overpower especially when you're met with a strong-willed kid. So with all that to say, when I started learning from you, I was like, oh, wow, this same exact thing is happening in my financial world. So as a business leader, uh, you know, it's just like, man, it's intense, right? Like entrepreneurship, (laughs) it's not as... Raising kids is like, I think the hardest job in the world. 100%. Entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship is is second. Kicked my ass. and um, (laughs) So much self-doubt and like believing in yourself and going for things and like dropping sometimes 20K on ads and then the launch doesn't come in perfectly and and just believing in your messaging. And then you got the social game. It's just so intense. And so what I realized was happening for me was mirroring what was, you know, uh, what was happening for so many parents in the parenting world. And you you make, you something happens and maybe doesn't go as planned or it doesn't give you the exact results that you want. And you become terrified of making a mistake or what if I'm wrong or shame on me, I shouldn't have made that call. So that for me is what I've kind of realized has was created 
such a stressful environment around finances. And then as we went forward, I had every symptom in the book that you teach us in the program, you know, avoidance or, Mm -hmm. you know, like we'll get into all that probably. But, um, but so for me, just understanding like, oh, I have a reaction here. And most of the time I, when I look beneath, I'm worried and I feel scared Mm -hmm. that I've done something wrong. Yes. Right. I'm going to get in trouble. Yes. Like just happened last week with the taxes. I had a tax appointment. I was like, but now I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I was triggered, but my husband was with me and I was like, this is what's happening. You can slow it down and bring consciousness and love and your adult self to, and I just want you to know that comes up so much with taxes. Mm-hmm. The IRS freaking is such a stand-in for like toxic authority. Yes. Figures. The number of clients I have had, and myself included over the years, yeah. where we project all of our issues with authority figures and all of our stuff about being in trouble and all of our fear and shame and guilt and I've been bad and we really bring our like, I'm a child and I'm in trouble self to yes. our taxes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fully insane, but it's so unconscious. And I'm so glad you yeah. were able to interrupt the patterning and just be like, oh, I'm triggered right now. Like the IRS is not my angry father. Yeah. Right? Like it and- feels like it is, but it's not. The IRS is not a human. It is a bunch of humans who just like have regular jobs. Yeah. And they literally don't give a shit about you and your money. Like yeah. and how you're behaving. Like they are not having some sort of a moral story about you and your like they're just like, are they paying? Are they not? They're yeah. just human beings. I'm sure most of them are lovely. Yes. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're just doing their job like everyone yeah. else. <laughs> and it's always okay. And he, like, I'm, it's you know, always even, okay. And even if it wasn't, even if you got audited, like to, to it's not to like you're going to go to jail down. for not paying your taxes. No one's coming after you. Yeah. Like you just got to call them. And we, I did a whole coaching session with a woman about this and, That's and awesome. I, and we were just like, you know, really, I know there's somebody listening who needs this. It's like, be just Come into a place of safety, which of course is what we teach in Relax Money, how to do that. Like find safety in your body, find wholeness in your body, work with the part of you that feels scared, work with the part of you that's afraid of getting in trouble. You know, go back and be with that part uh, through its internal family systems therapy uh, or practices. I'm not a therapist, but (laughs) I guide people in being their own facilitator for that. And then you can just make a call and come up with a proactive plan from your wholeness as an adult grown ass woman. Yeah. Um, okay, so you were just saying that that was happening. And even even the part of that was so interesting to have it with the lens of what I've learned from you is that it, it wasn't even about me making, it was, it was, sure, it was a fear about the call I made. So like right. I let go mm-hmm. of an agency mm-hmm. and hired a new agency mm-hmm. and it was like right away I could feel like, uh-oh, catastrophizing. Mm-hmm. Like again, mm-hmm. that's what a lot of us grow up with, right? Like you, the, you come in and the milk is, the parent sees you spilled your milk and it's like the end of the freaking world. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, you know, as a kid, you're just like, this sucks. Like, and that's how it was in my home. Like mm-hmm. everything was just like, oh my gosh, like chill out. But it didn't <laughs> matter if you were like fighting with your brother right. or you rolled your eyes or there was just always a price to pay. And it's mm. like, it's, you know, as I've gotten older and I'm an educator, it's like, it's just a mistake. <laughs> like yeah. mistakes are opportunities to learn. We don't need to make them for alarm fires. But growing up, it was like that. So in the tax situation, I was like, uh-oh, what have I done wrong? Mm. I hired this agency. They probably blew it because they had made a mistake that we had let them go with, but we fixed the mistake, like ended up getting a lot more money because we found the mistake. Great. But like, it was still like, yeah, it was all this like, uh uh-oh, but it was, that was like, you know, five, six minute thing inside of me um, that I was like, oh no, Uh, you know, crying on the verge of crying. And Terry was there. He's watched the stuff with me. And so he understands what's happening for me now. So now he can support me. So just the level of visibility is so much higher now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then I'm able to bring in safety quicker. I'm still working on doing like the, the practices in the moment. I'm very like resistant. I'm a stubborn, stubborn little one. That's where my amazing strong little kid, daughter gets it. But, um, but I, it's just happening faster. And I'm, yes. the understanding is so impactful. And I know that that is changing the landscape of everything for me. Yeah. 
And it does, it takes time because if we think about the patterning from childhood, I mean, this is literally what you do for work. Yeah. But if we, I mean, you and I sort of do the same thing yeah. in a totally really different do. way. But um, when we think about the length of time of the imprinting and doing it yeah. one way, which is fear and shame-based, yep. guilt-based, right? around any kind of behavior, financial or otherwise, mm -hmm. when we think about how long that was embedded in our system, in our lived experience, not to mention how long that's been part of culture and how many generations back that goes in our ancestral line, yep. it's deep. So like, yeah, it's not going to be a complete overhaul in a month. However, it's remarkable the change that you can see relatively quickly because you shared, you even encountered a trigger, which was that DM that you got with the person saying, hey, here's somebody who's arguing that gentle parenting isn't biblical, whatever. And in the past, you would have gotten hooked by that. Yes. And that hook is a nervous system imprint because what your body would have recognized in the past was, oh, this is familiar. Let me go there, right? Like, conflict, drama, you know, I'm projecting, I don't know what, overworking. what this is, overworking, right? Like, like I yeah. need to convince this person, I need to, right, let me prove that I'm not a bad girl. Yeah. And so that was all like a hook. But even just from coming to two days of a free workshop, yeah. you already were able to access a sense of wholeness and safety to set a boundary and not be hooked in an old way. So that that's like, that's dramatic. And it, it's a testament to your availability to the work because that's only like not even two hours of engaging. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Well, and it's it, that like, you know, goes into the health side of this too, is it, it was such a big deal for me because I feel like becoming an entrepreneur like has made me sick. Like mm. it didn't make me sick, but again, it came back to like, what have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, I, like, I would feel like for a few years I gave myself Hashimoto's. So mm. right now I'm like trying to heal from Hashimoto's mm -hmm. and it's intense, but you can do it through nutrition and totally. vitamins and all the things and I'm doing it. But, Yay! um, but like it started after I became an entrepreneur. Yeah. The stress is so real. It's so real. Right. And so, um, just like the, in that moment of that setting that boundary and it feeling so natural and easy for me, it really represented a lot because oh, yeah. the overworking and, and I scan, it's going to take me a while to like continue to unlearn that. But in the business, there was a pattern of just overworking, overgiving. Yes. And again, like I can see how that was modeled to me growing mm -hmm. up and just struggling to to follow through on the boundaries. I mean, it was just like a joke for me. With our whole, my whole team for 2023, one of the things that we had done is like, we're gonna set stronger boundaries and we're not gonna work outside of work hours and check Slack and Boxer and all these things. And like all the girls pretty much did it. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, right. You know, like still checking things at 9 p.m. or engaging in stupid conversations that, you know, just like stuff like that. So yeah. it was even bigger to me because it represented the start of um, and I had tried before, but this time it has, it has felt like boundaries have become easier and more relaxed and I'm not where I want to be yet, but that really signaled to me something really huge. Cause there's the financial side of this on both the personal and the business that I felt such a shift, but then the health side is really wow. like almost the most important because it's for sure the most important. <sighs> yeah. So being able to set boundaries more clearly, kindly, Powerfully. Yes, powerfully, yes. Is absolutely one of the most invisible, I'm sorry, one of the most important invisible inputs for yeah. creating long term financial growth. I have yeah. never seen somebody thrive financially. And when I say thrive financially, I mean making great money, but I also mean feeling abundant. Yeah. Because I know plenty of people who've made great money and don't feel abundant. So that is not thriving financially. So yeah. both financially well off and also joy, right? So yeah. together, having good boundaries is essential for that. I have never met anybody financially thriving who doesn't have awesome boundaries. And it's interesting that you mentioned Hashimoto's because that really has to do with, you know, thyroid, fifth chakra, 
using our voice. So Mm -hmm. I just love that the example you brought in was setting a boundary. It wasn't verbal. I know it was a DM, but it's the same thing, right? Like it's still using your voice, voice. And so you really are exhibiting such incredible healing energetically, which of course, obviously diet matters, all of the supplement, yeah. all of that stuff matters. And, and that metaphorical piece of using your voice and fifth chakra power and energy to set those boundaries is so beautiful. And yeah. we have to feel safe and worthy enough to do that. Yeah. And that comes from working with our nervous system. So yeah. I love that so much. Okay, so we talked about boundaries, so powerful. <clears throat> Um, Is there anything else that you would want to share about how relaxed money has helped you in your personal life? You mentioned with your health, uh, but then also maybe possibly with your, you know, in your financials, but also maybe with your business, like anything else that has been an impact that you would want people to know about? Yeah. So, um, there's actually a lot, (laughs) Um, and it's, you know, it's tough to just choose, one. So I'll just kind of mention some, Kate, and then you you can dig in deeper if you want to. Um, So personal bank account has grown significantly. It's the first one that I'm seeing like, oh, financial lift is happening, right? Financial Um, lift. Financial lift. I love that phrase. That's great. (laughs) We're going to use that in our ads somewhere. I know, right? Gain financial lift. (laughs) (laughs) And and I know I, it's because there's been a, a lot of healing that's taken place with like, um, what I was spending my money on was a lot of like numbing practices. Mm. And so like, I, you know, if I, I live right next to Target, it's the biggest curse and blessing at the same time. And I would, I remember specifically being like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Like, I'll, you know what? I need milk. I'm going to go to Target mm-hmm. to get the milk and I'll just cruise through Magnolia the Magnolia section and why I'm there, you know, I'll just grab a new pillow and a blanket and next thing you know, $90, right? It's like, and so, and I was consistently like, like struggling to stay on top. Like my spending had gone beyond because I was not getting, I was not paying myself. Mm -hmm. So five years of not paying myself Mm -hmm. consistently in the business and that changed. So once I joined the program, uh, we started implementing Profit First System. Yay! And, yay. and <laughs> the yeah. best. Oh my gosh. Uh, and one of my girls and I sit down every two weeks to do the business side of things. Started taking a paycheck. Um, it's you not nearly. You started paying yourself? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, since October, I think it's five months. And wow. You know, before I was embarrassed to say that because I was like, yeah, just you know, so you know, it's like really common. It is. And my and the book helped me to realize that, but like multiple six figure business. Yeah. And the, the founder is not taking, I cannot even tell you the number of people I talk to where that's real. Yeah. Doesn't mean it has to be so common. I want it to not be so common, but I just, it, for anyone listening, who's not paying themselves and who has shame or is embarrassed about that, like, let's just normalize how common it is. Yeah. Because we talked about shame, guilt, blame, doesn't make any progress. So you can just release that. It doesn't. And look at you. Yeah. And thank God for supportive spouses. But I also learned so much about how much I had released of like responsibility and empowerment just mm. to like let spouse handle everything. And, and again, he he is one of the reasons why this company is where it is now. And I mean, we're thousands and thousands of lives changed and and I saved. I mean, we get yeah. notes about people who decided not to end their life. I mean, it was intense work that we're doing, yeah. but he's a he's a huge reason of that just for many reasons, but um, and he's really involved in the business too, but he financially has backed this company and supported it yeah. for me not to take a paycheck. Yeah. But I also realized that I was just so disempowered in the financial area yes. because I just let him handle it. And then he fell into like, that's just one of the ways I take care of my girl, you know? And it's like, well, honey, let's change that. Yeah. <laughs> so we've changed that. Um, and now we are consistently, we have like hot sex and money dates on I Friday morning. I love that. Yeah. It's 20, so great. 23 years marriage, 20, 28 oh. years together, 23 married. And so I'm just all about the morning. So, so and then you taught us, right? Like if you can create that consistency, but then I think somewhere in the program we talked about if you can couple, like if you can bring it together with like a joyful thing, then that's awesome. So he's stoked. Oh my stoked. gosh, look yeah. at you. Yeah. That's amazing. Thing. And that's still a lot of work do for you, me. Do you I get do the triggered. money date first or do you have sex first? Sex. Which one? Sex first. Yes. And then the money date. Yes. That is fucking brilliant. And. Okay. I love it so much. 
<laughs> and I will add, it's still a lot for me. Like yeah. when I sit down, I'm like, I, I can feel my body still. Mm. Like 28 years together and we've never done this. Yeah. Like not the sex part, obviously we have two kids. <laughs> but we were but like, like, but like. But the but not just, money dates. It always just happened, like we just worked it out. Like we would sit down with a financial planner every few years or yeah. something. But yeah. like this consistency, I'm like, wow, we've never done this. So he, I, I'm all up in his numbers. He's all up in mine. Mm -hmm. We've always had separate bank accounts. And, and it's, I just always feel triggered and scared. And I'm just, every time we do it, I'm like, I'm okay. We're okay. Yeah. And it's the same thing that happens in the business. I'll, I'll often sit down to an accounting call and I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Let's see. Are we negative again? And it's like, no, we're fine. Like, it's okay. And even if we are negative, my planner, she's like, hey, we planned this. Remember, this is a, mm -hmm. or, um, a business that goes up and down. We're okay. Yeah. And so just That's the how entrepreneurship is. Yeah. Some months are big. Some months aren't. That's like totally, again, it's normal. Yeah. 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 And just, yeah, the consistency of, of being, uh, looking at the numbers and being empowered in them is a big change for me because mm. I was an avoider and I was scared. I was just scared. So I would, I would put it off. I would let my credit cards go late for no reason. I would get fees. Like there was just a lot of weird, unhealthy stuff going on. Um, Terry and I have turned back on retirement savings after Yay! three years of a break. And then, um, and then lastly, I speaking about like on a little bit different of a level, but trusting myself and my intuition and my gut as a leader of this organization, it's just a lot. And um, and so I had been feeling like ads was just kind of like after years of like so knee deep in learning and probably had like seven agencies and it just wasn't feeling super in line and it felt just like it was draining the bottom, you know, the, the business mm -hmm. financially. So I made the call to stop the ads in 2024 and just go the organic route with mm -hmm. Natasha's program, which is still also vulnerable because mm -hmm. it's a lot of creation mm -hmm. and just putting yourself out there. And within like a week of doing that for our launch that happened in January, we had a real go viral and we got like 1.4 million views. This was wow. about two months after the program that I started with you. And just again, the trusting of myself was was the, the success here. And, um, and then after that, the next week we had another one go viral. It was a half million views. And so we funded our entire <laughs> launch. Yeah. To almost 2000 registrations for our January challenge with no ads. So that's a savings. We were thinking of like six, 7,000. So that's a lift on the business too, but it was just presented in a different way. And trusting yourself. And do you know what trusting yourself does? I know you know this, but I'm just highlighting it. Trusting ourselves is like a massive expander on the conduit of financial resources. So mm -hmm. the, the, the activator of trusting yourself and believing in yourself opens up the creative channel yeah. because there's not all the, the, the static of, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, my ideas are dumb. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Right? So true. <laughs> so like, true. That clogs up the whole thing. And then the ideas that are meant for you, you know, if anybody's read Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic, right? The ideas mm -hmm. don't come to you because the channel is clogged. You unclogged the channel. These brilliant ideas came through for these viral reels that you got to fill your challenge for free because your creativity is a form of prosperity. Yes. Your, and it's unlimited. It is free. Yeah. Do you see how you turned your creativity and life force energy into money? Yes. Through do, trusting Kate. yourself <laughs> and opening I the do. channel? Like, that is so cool. Yeah. I love it. And that's been a real well, challenge. I'm going to go check out those reels. I want to see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Get some inspiration. Yeah. And hey, we'll now link, we'll link them in the show notes. Yeah. And now I updated them to a new funnel. So they're still working. See? That's the beauty of Natasha's Look stuff. at you. Oh my gosh. Back on the chat box. <laughs> okay. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing those things. Yeah. Now back on to parenting. This will be yeah. my final question for you. Now that you're learning what you're learning and you have a 14 year old and a 16 year old. So you're further along than I am in terms of like prepping your kids to go out yeah. in the world. And teaching kids about money is something that I think about a lot, especially as my kids get older. And it's a, it's a, it's a body of work that I'm still in development around. Yeah. Um, I love it. Though I do, I do think I'm going to bring a piece on it into the next Relax Money program because, um, 
you know, people are asking and I think I nice. know what I'm doing sort of. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would, but I would, I, I mean, we have something we're doing with the kids. It seems to be working, but I'm curious, what are you feeling like is important to pass along to your children around money? And what would you hope and what are you wanting to teach the parents in your programs and in your membership about money so that they can really be uh, passing along positive, powerful money, beliefs, actions, realities, and imprints for their kids? Yeah. It's so good. And that's why, again, like I was just felt so called to be here because it's like your work and my work is so it's essential. It ha- like we it is have essential. to have this for humanity. Yeah. Like and it's money is like the number one thing. Ev- every single person holds holds yeah. it for the most part. You you have to I mean, except for like monks and like people who live in yeah. like who exchange services. The vast still. majority. But like majority. Vast majority. Yeah, we're doing and this. And yet there really isn't a lot of education from an early age about it. No. I mean, it's just trippy, right? So, so there's a few things that, I mean, we, we say a lot. Like one of the things I teach is um, to make sure you're replacing when you're in the store. I mean, these are just more like tactical stuffs. And then I, I can love talk tactical. about- <laughs> talk about um, what I'm planning with my kids and what I would want to teach. But tactical is like, um, you know, if you're in the grocery store, a lot of people would like if your kids, the stupid candy and the Legos that are like right at their eye level, right? I can't even. And the kids are like, I just, I just like, don't take my kids to stores. Yeah. Good for you. It's a, that's a smart strategy. (laughs) Oh, we just don't go there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I always, when I'm coaching, I'm like, you could just leave your kids at home and grocery shop at 9 p.m. That might be the solution. I just order delivery. (laughs) Me too. The extra 10 bucks is worth not fighting with anybody about the candy. Because now as teenagers, when I bring them to the store, it's like an extra 50 bucks. They want all the stuff. Um, So, so, so we just help parents understand that instead of saying, no, we can't afford that just to say, oh, I can see why you want that. And I'm not willing to buy that today. Okay, great. But you can put it on your list. Yes. You can absolutely put it on your wish list. Great. And then you can choose, you can save up for it yeah. or you can ask for it for your birthday or like there's all these options of like how you're going to get so that. So it's like a, it's like a yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a no, but it's a yes. Yeah. Not which yet, is, which is yeah. great. I love that because it also is teaching delayed gratification, which is really important for brain development. So that's a great way to just help uh, kids not feel bad for asking. Yes. So especially if you have a strong-willed kid, they are going to ask for the freaking moon. And like the earlier you can get at just being like, no wonder you want that. Like Stella used to be the queen of this. Affirming. Yeah. We used to go to Disneyland and we'd leave at 10 p.m. when she was like 4 p.m. And she'd be like, why can't we stay till midnight? Yeah. Like you are four, right. but um, they just want a lot, and we want yeah. to like help them understand that that's great. Mm-hmm. Like there, you know, there are ways to get that. So that that would be a big change. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think for me moving forward with a thirteen and a sixteen year old, you know, when you're completely changing your system, it it can feel overwhelming. So for me, I'm just starting with knowing that the modeling is going to be huge. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to make sure that. We just start for like maybe the next six months um, because, I mean, Stella's getting up there. She's going to be in college in two years. But just letting them know like, hey, dad and I had a meeting Mm -hmm. this morning. Here's what came up. Um, And then next week, hey, dad and I had our financial meeting. So there'll just be a lot of like, because it's when they're at school. Mm -hmm. The summer, they actually will see it. Stella Mm -hmm. will be sleeping because she's a teenager. So I'll just make sure that the modeling is happening. And then in six months, I'll probably um, incorporate some type of like, hey, guys, it's Sunday. Remember, we're going to do our laundry, not on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. <laughs> and we're going to just like look at our numbers for the week. What do you guys need? Like, let's make sure um, the money you need for uh, school lunches is in there, whatever you need. And then what are you saving up for? Like all the things. So that's the plan. But right now it's not, it's not you know, it's yeah. not there yet. And I can tell, I can see how the absence of it is a big problem. Um, especially now that my kids have bank accounts and they are spending on their own. And I see Stella having some like behavior that I'm like, oh, let's, let's clean that up. But we're just not there yet. So, but I can see how powerful that's going to be for the future of humanity. Yes, it is. And also um, highlighting that in case there's any tape running for you or anyone else listening of like, oh, my kids are now teenagers or my kids are now young adults and I didn't do this. I just want to say from the perspective of compounding interest, which is the eighth wonder of the world, 
that's according to Einstein, but also me. <laughs> um, there is so much time. Like, true. it's great. It's great. And yeah. if you do nothing else but explain to them and pass along the wonder of compounding interest and get them investing now, mm. so it true. is such a gift. So your kids are so freaking young in terms of compounding yeah. interest. You're doing great. And I love your advice about like affirming desire, mm, affirming yeah. desire, saying, yes, you can have that. And here are the ways, not right now, not from me, but- yeah. Here are the ways you could put it on your list. You could save up for it. Like I'm affirming that you get to want things. And also here's how we get the things that we want. Yeah. And here's how we're wiring our brain for delayed gratification, which is going to contribute to their long-term success in huge ways. So I love that so much. Wendy, you're great. I learned so much from you today. I'm just into it. <laughs> this was a really fun conversation. Um, of course, if people want to check out Relax Money, we'll have all the info on that for them after the episode. But I want to know if folks want to learn about you and your parenting, coaching, and your membership, where should they connect? Thank you for asking, Kate. Yeah. FreshStartFamilyOnline.com. It's a family great place. online. Fresh Start no, Family. Fresh Start Family Online. Dot com. Dot com. And then also on Instagram, Fresh Start okay. Wendy. I'm over Fresh there and I do tons of teaching over there. And then our great. podcast, The Fresh Start Family Show, that my husband co hosts with me. Oh my gosh, how fun. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll put all of those links in the show notes. Thank you so much for being such a glowing, incredible star, Relax Money student. Thank you for coming and sharing your story here today. I know it's going to change a lot of lives. Thank you. I'm really for grateful me. for you. Thank <laughs> so you. So grateful for you too. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Plenty with our incredible star student, Wendy Snyder. I am so excited that you are here getting this information because it matters. As Wendy said, this work is essential. And I loved learning how incorporating the relaxed money philosophies, practices, strategies have helped Wendy get financial lift in her marriage, in her personal finances, and in her business finances. So if her story and her practices inspired you, you must come to the free wide receiver workshop, which is coming up. You can get access to it totally for free over at katenorthrop.com forward slash wide. I only teach like this two times a year live. It is the only way that you can get free access to this material. I teach in the same way that I teach in my paid programs because I only have one setting. So come on over to katenorthup.com forward slash wide. And I cannot wait to help you on your way to taking your relationship with money to the next level. Thank you again for listening to Plenty. If you liked this episode, share it with a friend, subscribe, leave us a review, leave us a comment, share it on social. Thank you for being here and I will see you next time. Woohoo! You made it to the end of an episode of Plenty. Don't you feel expanded already? So if you liked this episode, go ahead and leave us a review. Subscribe to the podcast, text a friend and let them know they need to listen in. That helps us spread the word so more people can experience plenty together. And if you want to ease your path to creating wealth, I created a money breakthrough guide for you where I interviewed over 20 of my high earning women friends and I asked them what their biggest money breakthrough guide was. And the responses were so mind blowing and helpful I knew I needed to pass them along to you. This is the kind of thing that is often only shared behind closed doors, but now you can access it totally for free. So head over to katenorthrop.com forward slash breakthroughs and get the guide. Again, that's katenorthrop.com forward slash breakthroughs. And I'll see you next time for plenty.